From kitchen nightmares to hotel hell, a bad dish is a bad dish. These are the times that Chef Ramsay got served absolutely disgusting food. And this next chef grilled the only thing that you shouldn't grill and made a mess out of it. In the 12th episode of season 5, Chef Ramsay visited Park's Edge in Inman Park, Georgia. The restaurant was owned by two best friends named Jorge and Richard, who were sadly clueless. Having no experience in the industry, Richard and Jorge underestimated the hard work required to run a restaurant. They made several mistakes, many of which violated health codes. Things were so disastrous that in just three years of starting the business, the health department had forced them to close twice. Already in shambles, the owners made their employees work overtime to make ends meet. But Richard single-handedly made the entire scenario even worse thanks to his one stupid comment. In an interview with the local news, Richard ended up triggering the locals when he accused them of being Yep, that's apparently the reason why his restaurant wasn't doing well. In truth, the owners put up a tent outside their restaurant without permission, mind you, and were selling alcohol without a valid permit. I don't think you need a degree to understand that invading space and distributing alcohol requires a certain amount of paperwork. I mean, come on! Everyone knows that, but not Richard. Having previously worked at an air freight company, this clueless man drove his entire restaurant into the ground with one comment. Now, of course, Chef Ramsay did his research before heading into this crazy establishment. But he had no idea that he was going to be in for a big surprise. Jorge and Richard had come up with their own ways to run the place. And Chef Ramsay got a glimpse of this from the get-go simply by looking at the menu. After a brief conversation with Richard and Jorge, when Chef Ramsay was ready to order some food, he noticed that the menu lacked any direction whatsoever. There were a couple of dishes that were Mexican, and there were a few that were Asian. But wait, there was also a hint of Indian? Okay, well, it looks like they wanted to fuse different cultures together. But all it really caused was confusion. On top of that, Amy, the server, surprised Chef Ramsay when she confirmed a very serious doubt that he had. While going over the menu, Chef Ramsay came across a dish called the Grilled Caesar Salad. Now, of course, all of us know what a Caesar salad is, but Chef Ramsay wanted to check which part of it was actually grilled. When Amy said something totally out of this world, Chef Ramsay had to ask her twice before he actually understood what she said. And this is how that went down. The lettuce is grilled. Uh huh? Top it on the grill. You never heard of that? No. The famous chef would be even more shocked when he finally received the dish. The lettuce was actually grilled. Honestly, it was way more than grilled, it was charred. Chef Ramsay was so appalled that he actually found it amusing. He then went on to share his feelings with the rest of the customers and said this. This is the first for me, a grilled Caesar salad. And I was there actually grilled the lettuce. Soon after, he asked if anyone had ever seen something as hideous as this. And well, it doesn't surprise me that it was a first for everyone as well. When Chef Ramsay dug into this mess of a dish, he realized that the chef who had made this simply threw the lettuce on a plate. He didn't even have the patience to cut the butt off, nor did he even try to clean it. The famous chef simply moved the entire chunk of lettuce aside and tried the chicken, which sadly turned out to be just as bad. Finally, this is what Chef Ramsay had to say about the dish. Dry chicken. The salad looks hideous. Now, this restaurant had two owners who were at odds with each other. Chef Jorge went to culinary school, but he didn't get proper training. Richard, on the other hand, just couldn't handle the pressure. So, whenever things got busy, Richard took the easy way out. He would go to the front of house and just smile and waste time as his restaurant crashed and burned. But if things got more intense, Richard would simply just disappear. Now, that's really not what you'd expect from a restaurant owner. However, when Chef Ramsay stayed back to observe the dinner service, he found out more atrocious things about the owners. The cooking staff, who were often chastised by Chef Jorge, had way more experience than both the owners put together. 10 years of experience to be exact. But sadly, they didn't have a say in anything. Chef Ramsay observed Jorge at work, and the man was a complete disaster. With the orders piling on, he quickly got confused and overwhelmed. Several customers weren't impressed with the food, and their complaints ranged from the food being too spicy, too raw, too dry, or even just freezing cold. Richard had gone into hiding once again. Remember how the restaurant was closed multiple times for a health code violation? Well, it looks like Richard and Jorge didn't learn a thing from that. When Chef Ramsay inspected the kitchen, he found stale and moldy food, cooked food that had gone bad, and loads of spoiled chicken stacked next to each other. Chef Ramsay also learned that Richard often drank on the job. 
And since both owners didn't communicate very well with each other, Chef Jorge didn't even know about Richard's drinking spree. It doesn't surprise me that the restaurant failed two more health inspections after the show aired. The owners promised to bounce back with a new restaurant at a new location, but this never happened. These two dreadful owners who put their customers' lives at risk lost their precious business, but this next restaurant served Chef Ramsay an inconceivable combination. What's worse is that they were this close to serving him mouse feces. In the fourth episode of season two, Chef Ramsay visited Trobiano's in Great Neck, New York. The Italian restaurant was owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend Tiffany's parents, Joe and Pat. The restaurant was struggling with some fierce competition from the other Italian restaurants, but that wasn't the only reason why they were failing. Anthony attended culinary school, and this made him believe that he was a seasoned executive chef. He was so full of himself that he never bothered to listen to anyone. At first, the restaurant was doing really well. But when the food quality dropped down, the business came down with it. Joe and Pat were $500,000 in debt, but Anthony didn't change. After all, it wasn't his money. Things had gotten so bad that Joe and Pat pitched in to help around at the restaurant. And they worked all day to make things work, but Anthony was so stubborn that they slowly started resenting each other. When Chef Ramsay arrived, he mistook the an early bird sign for a for sale sign, and this pissed them off. The idea for the early bird was from Anthony, but it didn't bring in any money. When Chef Ramsay sat down to taste the food, he came across a dish with one of the worst combinations ever. It was a chicken-wrapped shrimp. Chef Ramsay was obviously not impressed. He called Joe over and said this. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. Yep, the dish that looked like chicken but tasted like shrimp was Anthony's creation. I mean, who else would come up with something as crazy as this? Chef Ramsay sent the dish right back to the kitchen, and Anthony was shocked by this. While Anthony believed that all of his dishes were perfect, he made a habit of sending them out without tasting them even once. But Anthony wasn't ready to accept his mistakes. When Chef Ramsay started to confront him, Anthony pulled a defensive shield over himself. Anthony's ego was one of the main reasons why this restaurant was failing. But when Chef Ramsay returned for an inspection, Anthony's foul behavior was the last straw for Chef Ramsay's patience. The famous chef noticed that every corner of the kitchen was dirty. The floor, the equipment, and the plates that were stored close to the floor were dirty. But what Chef Ramsay found next was absolutely disgusting. Just as he was looking around behind the equipment, he found this. What's that on there? The droppings. They're not receipts. Those were actual mouse droppings. Chef Ramsay was furious when Anthony told him that the staff were supposed to do all the cleaning and he never did any of it. Well, being a half a million dollars in debt is inevitable with such an arrogant and irresponsible person at the top. But this next restaurant served Chef Ramsay the most tasteless soup he's ever had, and you won't believe what he compared its taste to. In episode 7 of season 2, Chef Ramsay visited Hannah and Mason in Cranberry, New Jersey. Hannah and Mason was a French-style bistro owned by Chris Posner and Brian Kelly. Chris and Brian previously worked as chefs in the same restaurant under the previous owner. And eventually, they decided to buy it together, but they didn't divide up the work evenly. While Brian was lazy, Chris did everything from managing the staff to ordering the food and even cooking. The restaurant was only open three evenings a week since Brian didn't like working his nights off. This affected the business to such an extent that the staff often complained about inconsistent pay. But Brian didn't understand the gravity of the situation. Considering the fact that the restaurant was run by chefs, Chef Ramsay expected the food to be half decent. But all of his hopes were destroyed when he was served a baked onion soup, some quiche, and a lamb lollipop. Although all the dishes were revolting, the baked onion soup was the worst. Everything from its presentation to its texture, Chef Ramsay disliked the entire dish. When the famous chef moved the entire chunk of garnish aside, it looked like a mound of crap. That's just nasty. Anyway, when Chef Ramsay dug through all of the bread and cheese, he finally made his way to the few ounces of soup that tasted like this. Absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. But what could you expect from a place where the owner was scared of receiving feedback, while the other could care less about the business in the first place? Anyway, let's fast forward to the Valentine's Day dinner service, which is a busy day for any restaurant. Since most of the food was substandard, it's not surprising that most of their dates left. And just as expected, nobody was checking the food before it left the kitchen. In fact, some rotting lettuce almost left the kitchen, but thanks to Chef Ramsay who flagged it down, it did it. When Ramsay questioned the staff about this, they told him that the lettuce came pre-washed and they never washed it before using it. 
Sure, this is disgusting, but it gets even worse. To Chef Ramsay's utter horror, he noticed a week-old moldy dessert missing from the display tray on one of the customer's plates. Chef Ramsay was just about done with the carelessness displayed at this restaurant, and he shut the kitchen down for good. Well, I hope the customer didn't eat the stale dessert before Chef Ramsay shut the place down. But this next restaurant served Chef Ramsay a dish that almost got him sick. In the very first episode of the UK version of Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay visited Bonaparte's in Silsden, England. Bonaparte was a wine restaurant owned by Sue Ray and Tim Gray, who worked as the executive chef. Sue had previously worked many jobs except at a restaurant, so she wanted to try something new, but failed miserably at it. The restaurant was already a year old when Chef Ramsay visited and was already struggling to stay open. Tim Gray wasn't even a trained chef. He was the dishwasher at the restaurant, but became the head chef after Sue couldn't find anyone to fill in the position. While Tim's ultimate goal was to become a famous chef, he did end up becoming famous, but for all the wrong reasons. Tim was an absolute mess in the kitchen. He showed no respect for his job or the food that he made. During the service, Chef Ramsay noticed that everything was poorly done. From the appetizers to the entrees, the food was either burnt or incomplete. But Sue had no idea about the situation in the kitchen. The kitchen was turned into an epicenter of health hazards, but the head chef and his assistant simply didn't care. To further test his abilities, Chef Ramsay challenged him to cook him a signature dish, and he made scallops with black pudding sauce. Just after tasting it, Chef Ramsay started to do this. <laughs> it's gotta be sick. <laughs> he was horrified. Tim had just served him rancid scallops that could have easily killed him. But Tim only understood that they had gone bad when he tasted them and started to feel sick himself. Yeah, that's how reckless he was. Looking at the condition of the restaurant, all Chef Ramsay could say was this. It's grim. It's grim. And it's out of order. But that wasn't the end of it. Chef Ramsay later discovered that Tim was so ignorant that he never knew that food kept in the fridge went bad. Well, that's a deal breaker right there. I mean, look, I don't even have to go into further detail now that you know that the head chef didn't even have basic knowledge. Anyway, in this next restaurant, Chef Ramsay became a daredevil when he requested a dish that the server specifically warned him not to get. I told him not to get it. In the 12th episode of season 3, Chef Ramsay visited Sushi Co. in Thousand Oaks, California. The restaurant was owned by Akira and Lisa Hatai and was run by them along with their children Sammy and Hana. With his success and skills, Akira went up the ladder to become the manager and then the owner. At the time of Chef Ramsay's visit, the couple had opened Sushi Co. in its new location four years ago. They started off great and business was booming, but they soon started to lose $15,000 to $20,000 a month. Well, when Chef Ramsay sat down to taste the dishes, he was introduced to another crazy combination of food. So, do you remember the chocolate pizza from the Keating Hotel? Yeah, chefs sometimes lose it when it comes to creativity. But guess who else is creative? Well, you're listening to him and have been for the last few minutes. So if you haven't already, drop a like on my video and subscribe for more content like this. It's completely free, so there's practically no reason not to do it. Show me some of your love, guys. With that out of the way, speaking of creativity gone wrong, Akira went one notch higher when he presented Chef Ramsay this. Yep, this is what Akira calls the sushi pizza. Ever heard anything as absurd as this before? Shocked by the awfully disgusting combination of food, Chef Ramsay braved himself to try the sushi pizza, and this is how he reacted. Sorry. Do I even have to explain anymore? The dish was an insult to pizza and to Japanese culture. On top of that, the so-called sushi pizza was rancid. But Chef Ramsay simply had to get this off his chest, so he met up with the chef and completely roasted him for several minutes. And surprisingly, the head chef couldn't agree more with him. Take a look at this interaction, guys, because it couldn't get any weirder. Chef Ramsay said, Sushi pizza was a f joke. Right, okay. Hideous, disgusting, and an insult to Japanese culture, and an insult to a f pizza house. Akira was completely lost. And while he was the one who was bringing the restaurant down, he thought it was the other way around. Well, this is what happens when someone has a major lack of confidence and self-esteem. But Akira had one more problem, he couldn't follow instructions. The owners were already on the hunt for a new location while this episode was being taped. But it looks like they never found the right place, and with that came the end of Sushi Co. So these were the times that Chef Ramsay was served terrible dishes. 
I wonder how many times Chef Ramsay had to actually see the doctor after eating all the rancid crap that the restaurants offered him. Which reminds me, I'm a lot more scared to go to restaurants after watching this show because I just can't see what goes on in the kitchen. Am I the only one who feels this fear? Let me know down below. Jeff Ramsay has been served some really subpar food on Kitchen Nightmares. But this restaurant, which promised to serve fresh food, gave the famous chef a jolt when they served him something repulsive. However, you won't believe how bad things get as the episode goes on. Take it off the menu. Take them off the menu. So why haven't you? When it comes to Italian restaurants, the first thing that comes to mind is delicious pasta and risotto. And well, of course, how could I forget pizzas? Unfortunately, the food at this restaurant was nothing like you'd expect. In Season 7, Chef Ramsay visited Bella Luna in Easton, Pennsylvania. Owned by Rosario Scolo, the Italian-themed restaurant was purchased in 2010 for her two sons, Maurizio and Gianfranco. And it only made sense to do so because one of her sons had always dreamt of owning a restaurant. I'm specifically referring to Gianfranco, who was a culinary school graduate. While he did have the passion, he didn't exactly have the finances to own his own restaurant. John Franco was the head chef of the restaurant, and his brother Maurizio took over the position of bar manager. And considering how the restaurant was literally handed down to them on a golden plate, the siblings could have definitely done a better job. This chicken's burnt. What do you mean chicken is burnt? Does that look like burnt chicken? Please. I don't know what kind of culinary school John Franco graduated from, but the customers never really liked anything that he made. This restaurant might have been the owner's dream, but it was the customer's nightmare. For one reason or the other, food kept returning to the kitchen with complaints. And well, this isn't a sign of a good restaurant. However, they weren't just any complaints, but really dreadful ones. That's or not. I just don't think this is worth coming back to ever. Meanwhile, Maurizio and Rosario, instead of getting down to the problem and addressing it, being John Franco, preferred to take the back seat. They somehow believed that the locals would rather have frozen and microwave food rather than freshly prepared meals. And Chef Ramsay couldn't believe his ears. So you're saying they'd be more upset with fresh as opposed to frozen? Yeah. Come on, I don't think any customer would dislike fresh food. This meant that somebody here was screwing up, but they couldn't figure out who. What are we doing wrong? That's my question to myself. What am I doing wrong? John Franco believed that he was the best only because he was trained under the best. Now, one viewer of the show rightfully commented saying, just being passionate is enough to start a business but it's what you learn from others along the way that will help you run it. The only experience the head chef had was an internship he did in Manhattan after graduating, and clearly it wasn't enough. However, the food wasn't the only problem. What Tracy, the manager, had to say about the restaurants is truly appalling. Bella Luna, um, personally, I think it looks like a morgue. Gosh, that was harsh. But let's see how Chef Ramsay found the food that John Franco rated a solid 8 out of 10. To test the culinary graduate skills, Chef Ramsay ordered a veal salt and boca, a penne a la vodka, and mussels marinara. When Chef Ramsay received the veal, it looked dreadful. But did it taste any good? Well, I do have my fingers crossed right now, but this is how it turned out. Chewy, I've like been beating the crap out of. <laughs> Disgusting. The veal was battered, overcooked, and dusted with so much flour that it looked completely caked on. Dusted with flour. See all this? Yes. See this here? That, that's gunge. That's just raw flour. What's even more baffling is that Rosario didn't care about Chef Ramsay's feedback. Back in the kitchen, she said that if the culinary genius didn't like the veal, there was nothing she could do about it. Because, wait for it, Rosario firmly believed that that's how it was made and she wouldn't change anything about it. Then why did she even call Chef Ramsay? To give him a taste of her pompousness? Ramsay, all the while, had no idea that Rosario was actually disregarding his presence in every way, shape, or form. So he went ahead with trying the next dish, the penne a la vodka. While the veal was drenched in plain flour, the pasta was drowned in sauce and was cold. Did they maybe mistake Chef Ramsay's order for soup? I mean, what was with all that sauce? Don't expect much from Chef Ramsay's feedback because this is how he found it. The sauce is disgusting and that is gross. Does Chef not cook pasta? Now, why do I feel like that's not how fresh pasta should look like? Well, that's because it wasn't. While Chef Ramsay was trying his hardest not to throw up, back in the kitchen, John Franco revealed something crazy. What, what did we give him? Penne I cooked yesterday. I'm sure there's a difference. Wondering what they're mumbling about? Let me break it down for you. The watery, saucy penne that was served to Chef Ramsay wasn't even fresh. Huh, why am I not surprised at all? The dish was actually cooked the previous day, and I can't imagine in my wildest dreams serving something like that to a world-famous chef. 
Why couldn't they just tell him it wasn't available instead of making a fool of themselves like this? What's more disappointing was that John Franco wasn't even aware of it, and he hadn't even tasted the dish before sending it out. But let's get back to the pasta. It wasn't just watery, it was overcooked, bland, and had a ton of garlic in it. However, Chef Ramsay had a better way of describing it. You have to see Rosario's expression when Tracy walked to the kitchen with the famous chef's feedback. He said it was like baby vomit. Baby vomit. Wow. I think Ramsay was actually being kind when he said that. Anyway, it's now time for the last dish, the mussels marinara. Mussels are usually served in a bowl, and the portions are often pretty generous. But what Chef Ramsay received was really disappointing. There were barely eight mussels, and they were served on a plate. Like, who does that? The famous chef was sorely disappointed. That has to be the tightest portion of mussels I've ever seen in my entire life. Imagine paying $10 for a few mussels that were lazily thrown on a plate. Were they trying to scam their customers? Well, of course they were, because this is how they tasted like. They taste frozen. Can you just check with the chef, because they are so chewy. You heard that right, they were frozen. It looks like the owners didn't even know the difference between fresh and frozen food. How could you claim something that you aren't even following? Jeff Ramsey had to set things straight, so he headed right into the kitchen, and let me tell you, he wasn't happy. You've got more chance winning the lottery than you have becoming a success here. However, at this next restaurant, everything was god-awful. But you know what? Not only did Chef Ramsay have a heart attack at this restaurant, but you might too after what I'm gonna cover. You guys can't do your job right now. You shut the f*** up, right? In season 6, Chef Ramsay visited Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room in Monrovia, California. Sam Najjar and his family owned the restaurant that Sam worked as a busboy at since 1982. In 1997, Sam decided to buy it. But was that really a good decision? Well, you're gonna find out real soon. While business was booming in the beginning, it eventually went downhill. To reduce his costs, Sam sacked his staff in hopes of getting through this financial crisis. I don't know how much the firing helped, but during the time of filming, he was around $70,000 in debt. The only staff that the restaurant had was Sam's family, his wife, and children. The business was now entirely handled by the family alone. And before you assume things were going smoothly, let me tell you that all of them hated working there. They would often get into arguments and didn't even bother giving attention to the customers around them. You guys are taking the food without the salad? No. How is the chicken cold if we take it right off the grill? It wasn't cold. She came and told me. Sam's children worked long shifts around 12 hours every single day. And when I say every day, they're working seven days a week with no breaks. You could imagine why none of the children wanted to work there anymore. They had their own dreams but couldn't pursue them since they were stuck at the restaurant trying to support Sam. To make things much worse, Sam didn't even pay his children any wages since he couldn't afford it. He justified the lack of wages by letting them stay at his house for free. This could easily make him a selfish parent, but was he the only one at fault? This was turning out to be a vicious cycle, and one of the viewers correctly described how it worked. Sam's kids couldn't move out because they didn't have money, they didn't have money because they weren't paid, and they couldn't get a job since that would mean they would lose a place to stay. Well, you could definitely hear the desperation in Imad, Sam's son, and the head chef's voice in this next clip. I kind of want to start my life, but I'm not able to because, you know, I have to stick here with my dad. It's a sad state of affairs indeed. But what's even more depressing is the quality of the food at this godforsaken restaurant. For lunch, Chef Ramsay ordered a vegetable combo, lamb shank, yido, and the top sirloin steak and shrimp scampi cooked in medium rare. As soon as the kitchen received his order, the family started arguing. Don't worry, man. All the customers, including Ramsey, were able to hear this argument, and that's not what you'd imagine fine dining would be like. Stop, be quiet. Those people are looking over here. Anyway, let's move on to the first dish that came out, which was the vegetable combo. With just one look at the dish, you could say that there was nothing appetizing about it. And when Ramsey tasted it, he immediately started to question whether the eggplant in the dish was fresh. But was Chef Ramsay making things up? Of course not. Turns out the eggplant was canned and Ramsay was left dismayed. Canned eggplant? <laughs> no, that's gnarly. That's just dreadful. Overall, Chef Ramsay found the dish to be way too bland and you could say that he was already dreading the next dish to come. When the yiro arrived, the dish looked so dry that you wouldn't even want to taste it. Despite that, the famous chef did try it and he was struck with the same question. Was it fresh or not? Jeff Ramsey was let down yet again, and this is what he had to say about the dish. It doesn't even taste. No taste? I thought it shouldn't, though. 
Enjoy. I'm not giving out any prizes for guessing that the meat was frozen and simply heated in the microwave before being plated. Why would anyone want to come and pay premium prices to eat dry and tasteless food? I know I wouldn't. After two disappointing dishes, would the third one save the day? The final dish to be served was a lamb shank, and this is how it turned out to be. It looks anemic, the color's dreadful, and it just tastes like bland, boiled lamb. What do you think? Was it frozen or not? Whatever the case may be, the relationship between the family members had grown so cold that it would put anything to shame. Why don't you take over? I should. Get then out. Do it. If you don't want to get out, do it. If you don't want to get out, just... It didn't take much for the siblings to get into a full-blown fight. As much as I felt bad for them, I think Jamal was the most annoying of them all. He wasn't helpful at all. The only thing he did was create trouble by starting arguments and complaining about everything. You guys can't do your job right. You shut the and it's not just me. Several viewers picked up on this and slammed him for being a useless prick who threw a tantrum like a toddler every five minutes. Honestly, I can't agree more with the observation and I can't believe Chef Ramsay actually chose to sit through the ordeal. Even before the order reached his table, I could tell that this wasn't going to be very good. Let's start with the steak, which wasn't medium rare. It's well yeah, done. There's no red, there's nothing. Just a medium rare fossil water. Yeah. Solid and dry. As for the shrimp, I would have never guessed it would turn out like this. Was he trying to do, kill me? No, but that's how he adds flavor, I guess. Despite all the butter, the dish tasted like trash. And there was only one thing Chef Ramsay could say about that. I, I've never seen anything like this. Have you given up? Kind of. Kind of. Now, this next restaurant somehow served Chef Ramsay's orders all at once. Was the famous chef impressed? Well, you'll see that his response is actually golden. Hi. Yeah, right. Close your eyes. In season 5, Chef Ramsay visited Michon's in Atlanta, Georgia. Owned by Al and Gay, the restaurant was a smokehouse that the couple purchased in 2002. They intended to pass the business on to their daughter. When Al was running the restaurant, the business was good and his smoked meat was a hit amongst the customers. Sadly, Al fell ill with a collapsed lung and had to step down to take care of his health. He eventually passed the restaurant on to Natalie, their daughter, who was also the manager. Al wanted Natalie to up her game so he could retire in peace, but Natalie wasn't the least bit interested. Since Natalie wasn't a hands-on manager, the restaurant's quality suffered and Al found himself drowning in a debt worth $200,000. Despite his deteriorating health, Al constantly monitored the CCTV footage at the restaurant since he couldn't afford to take a break. As for the food, customers seemed to send a long list of complaints to the kitchen. But sadly, nothing was done to improve the situation. When Chef Ramsay arrived for lunch, he ordered smoked chicken gourmet salad, beef brisket, pork ribs with cornbread and mashed potatoes, green and baked beans, black-eyed peas, collard greens, and mac and cheese. Ramsay also wanted to order a mashed potato salad, but he was disappointed when it was revealed that the kitchen hated to peel potatoes, so they removed that item from the menu. Phew, that was a long and exhaustive list, but would Chef Ramsay actually enjoy all of these dishes? Oh, you'll be surprised as I go over each and every one of these. The first order to be served was the smoked chicken wings. The famous chef was informed that the wings were smoked that very morning, but could you believe them? It's dry. What a shame, because it's sauce. It's lovely, but meat. It's all dry. In actuality, he was served the previous day's chicken wings, and this made him extremely disappointed. The next order to arrive was the... Oh, wait a minute. What exactly is happening here? Chef Ramsay was served all the remaining dishes in one go. Uh, God, that was quick. Holy mackerel. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was really quick, right? But does that mean the food was good? Let's start with the smoked chicken salad, which Ramsay said this about. Old and sort of yucky and soggy. So gross. Looks like the chef didn't even bother with checking the vegetables before making the salad. Natalie didn't look like she cared that Chef Ramsay was served rotten food. She actually seemed to be pretty okay with it. She was like, rotten tomatoes? What's wrong with that? Next up, Chef Ramsay tried the pork ribs. And gosh, the meat looked absolutely depressing. But what did it taste like? It is dry and chewy. But it should sort of fall off the bone, but it's just dry. Now, let's move on to the cornbread, shall we? Mm. Really dry, like a mouthful of sand. How could someone mess up some cornbread? The black eyed peas were hideous. I can't believe how they messed up the simplest dish on the order. Chef Ramsay then went for the mashed potatoes, and I already don't like how they look. But did they taste better? Let's hear it from Chef Ramsay himself. Now I feel like I'm in prison, huh? 
that dreadful. As for the collard greens, they were gross, but what about the beef brisket? Dry and chewy. You could pass that for beef jerky. It's like a dog chew. If you thought Ramsay was being way too critical, wait till you see what the server had to say. What does that taste of? Nasty. That's one disastrous service. And one of Chef Ramsay's fans was gobsmacked seeing the famous chef being served pre-made food. I mean, how could anyone just throw some pre-packaged food into a microwave and serve it to the one and only Chef Ramsay? I can't agree more with this fan. That's really disrespectful and a restaurant that has the audacity to do this should be closed down. However, at this next establishment, Chef Ramsay found something appalling in his crab cakes. But wait, why were there crab cakes at a steakhouse? In season 3, Chef Ramsay visited PJ Steakhouse in Queens, New York. Owned by a married couple named Joe and Madeline, the restaurant was open in memory of Joe's brother, PJ. The couple, who originally worked in construction, had invested around $2 million into the restaurant. But was it wise to do so? Well, hell no. The couple lost a lot of money and they couldn't even afford their lifestyle anymore. Forget about their lifestyle, they couldn't even run the restaurant properly. When Chef Ramsay arrived for lunch, he was disappointed with the menu. For a steakhouse, the menu featured only two different steaks and no porterhouse or New York strip loin. Why would you call yourself a steakhouse when you don't even have other steaks to offer? Really, with no other choice, Ramsay ordered crab cakes, lobster ravioli, and a filet mignon. What a pity. But what do you think everything was like? I'm not too hopeful, but let's see what Chef Ramsay's take on it was. When Ramsay received the crab cakes, this is how he reacted. He's rancid. Plastic bits of crap running through the crab cakes. Did you hear that? Chef Ramsay found bits of plastic in his crab cakes. It's crazy how the restaurant chef Eric reacted to this accusation because this is what he had to say. Just happened to appear. I don't even have plastic in my kitchen. Wait, what? You don't even know where the plastic came from? Then what are these thin sheets that are practically wrapped around everything in the kitchen, huh? Edible cling wrap or something? Anyway, the person who was supposed to be bothered, Joe, wasn't concerned at all. But let's move on to the next order. It was now time for the filet mignon, which turned out to be like this. Quite tough. Are they always served with raw onions or? Yeah. Nah. Sautéed or caramelized onions would be understandable, but raw ones? What's up with this chef? The lobster ravioli was equally disappointing. The raviolis are disgusting, tart tannin and taste like there's a buzz in your mouth. Chef Ramsay definitely needed a palate cleanser after tasting this, but he certainly wouldn't get one from PJ's Steakhouse. Let's cover some of the worst food to ever be featured on Hotel Hell. As our first entry, we're going to discuss a hotel that was so incompetent that it served frozen fish to Gordon Ramsay. In the fifth episode of the very first season, Chef Ramsay traveled to Milford, Pennsylvania to visit River Rock Inn. At the time that this episode was being taped, Ken Pesciotta, the owner, was thousands of dollars in debt. He actually lived at the inn in one of the rooms since he was forced to sell his house to keep the place open. From the moment Chef Ramsay arrived, he knew things were going to be very rough. He wasn't welcomed by anyone and couldn't even locate the front desk. Once he found it, he noticed that it was caked in dust and debris. It was only then that Karen, the assistant innkeeper, finally welcomed him to the establishment. The famous chef was already disturbed by the overall appearance of the rooms and the hotel, but what exactly did he think of the food? Let's hope that the food is better than the rooms. Sure. After arriving at the dining room, Pashota told Chef Ramsay that he would rate the food a 7 or 8 out of 10. If you simply went off the owner's rating, you'd assume that the food was fairly good, but it was just the opposite. Additionally, the restaurant's menu lacked direction. Not only did they have Mexican dishes on offer, but also had Thai and Italian cuisine. What's worse, they didn't have any local dishes. This place was a mess. Later, the head waiter James proposed that Chef Ramsay order a trout dish that wasn't even fresh. The famous chef was taken aback by the fact that someone would recommend frozen food to him. Absolutely appalled, he asked the waiter this. You're recommending that I eat frozen trout from you know, Northern California. You know, chef, it, 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 it's been only frozen once. Well, it looks like James was taken aback by this himself. To escape Chef Ramsay's fury, James decided to complain about the fish to the owner. But this wasn't exactly a cowardly move. Pesciotta did in fact oversee the kitchen, set the menu, and did all of the grocery shopping. Ideally, it would be the head chef who would undertake these duties, but Pesciotta didn't trust anyone with them. Anyway, considering the fact that the owner was such a control freak, you'd expect the food to at least be good. But from the moment Chef Ramsay received his Thai appetizers, he noticed that the meat was frozen and tasted bland. When it came time to the main course, the famous chef at least hoped for a slight improvement. 
However, this is hotel hell, so he was expecting a bit too much. What he received will remind you of Jurassic Park. Take a look at the humongous portion of meat he was served. All the famous chef could say was this. Jesus Christ almighty. It's like someone's just dropped a fucking T-Rex foot on my plate. And guess what? According to James, this wasn't even their largest portion. That's crazy. But how did it taste? You guessed it, bad. Following the disappointing meal, Chef Ramsay headed out to meet with the staff. During this time, he talked with the head chef, who had been cooking for 18 years, but sadly had to blindly follow his boss's orders. By now, it was pretty clear that the staff had their hands tied, and Pashoda was the main reason why they were failing. Chef Ramsay perfectly described the situation by saying this. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic, you're the fucking iceberg. Well, it didn't take very long for the famous chef to understand the problem. Pashoda owed money to his mother and brother, his business showed no signs of improvement, and he spent so much time at the hotel that he had a really boring social life. What's more, he even went a step further and played Cupid in Pashoda's life. Wow, now that's something we haven't seen before. Pashoda was clearly happy with his makeover, and Chef Seth was excited to dish out the new menu, but this hotel in Southbridge, Massachusetts served cold and tasteless food that Chef Ramsay couldn't even pronounce from the menu. In the second episode of the third season, Chef Ramsay met with Jonathan and Lisa Crack, a married couple who owned the Vienna Inn, an Austrian-themed hotel. When he finally arrived, he was shocked to see a dead cat and cabbage by the entrance. Later, he received a complimentary boar meat starter, which was soggy and under-seasoned. Taking a look at the menu, the famous chef couldn't pronounce half of the dishes listed, which proved how unique and unusual they were. Finally, Chef Ramsay settled on some scallops, some beer-battered sauerkraut, and a vegetarian mushroom crepe. After having them cut open the scallops, Chef Ramsay sent a sweet comment back to the kitchen. You won't believe what he said to the chef. Would you like me to give me any comments back to the chef? Comments? Yeah, those shit. Thank you. Yeah, terrible. When it was time to eat the beer-battered sauerkraut, Chef Ramsay found that they tasted awful as well. And what do you think he said about the mushroom crepes, which already look messy? The famous chef dished out one of the most sarcastic comments ever, which left the waiter feeling confused. He said, I mean, you're kidding me. No, no, I'm fucking delicious. Seriously, really good. Seriously? Now the flowers I'm all about. Later, when Chef Ramsay arrived to witness the dinner service, it was a humongous disaster. Customers were being served food that was two days old, and there were dishes that just sat on top of the pass unnoticed for a long time. When Chef Ramsay inspected the kitchen, he found expired food, stale bacon, and meat that shouldn't really be there. The famous chef then took the couple outside and informed them that their business was doomed. Check out exactly what he said. The whole operation is screwed. The kitchen, shocking. The line, disaster. The customers, too, were well aware of the hotel's problems. One of them even pointed out that the clutter and uncooked scallops were unacceptable. Despite all this, Chef Ramsay tried his very best to turn the Vienna Inn around. However, not long after the rescue, the owners went back to their tasteless menu, which led to their inevitable closure. This next hotel in San Diego, California, though, served the crappiest pizza with loads of chocolate on it. In the fourth episode of the first season, Chef Ramsay visited the Keating Hotel, which was owned by a real estate developer named Eddie Kane. Kane spent millions of dollars to model the 35-room hotel after the Ferrari sports car. Although you'd anticipate it to look fantastic, everything about it was dreadful. Christos, the concierge, welcomed the famous chef and showed him to his $759 a night room, which sadly looked like a garage. Later on, a hungry Ramsay tried to request some room service, but the call was answered by the front desk. Regardless, he placed an order for tomato soup, pizza with barbecue chicken, and sliders with parmesan chicken, which were all terrible. What's worse, they all came in plastic containers, but they did allow the famous chef to do this. Later, when he headed down to the restaurant, he couldn't resist trying their dessert pizza. I mean, who wouldn't want to know what a pizza with strawberries, bacon, and chocolate tasted like? Well, obviously, it tasted disgusting. I would uh, really like to meet the uh, executive chef. It's kind of a given since it didn't look appetizing either. But you know what else isn't appetizing? What was served to Chef Ramsay at this hotel in New York? In the third episode of the first season, viewers were introduced to the Cambridge Hotel, which was just a few hours' drive from Manhattan. John Imhoff, a former service member and local attorney, purchased the hotel in 2007 and runs it alongside his wife, Tina Imhoff. When the couple decided to reach out to Chef Ramsay, they were $750,000 in debt. Things had gotten so bad that they put their home up for sale and intended to move into the third floor of the hotel. According to the hotel staff, John was a control freak who had poor leadership skills. They believed that tons of money was being lost for this reason alone. But that wasn't even the main problem. The food they served was appalling. 
When Chef Ramsay ordered duck, paella la mode, as well as pork and beans, he experienced nothing but disappointment. Both of you, yeah, just touch that meat there, please. Touch that. The pork and beans arrived first, and you won't believe what they look like. Needless to say, they didn't taste very good. He avoided eating the duck he was served, since he discovered that it was microwaved. Like, come on. When his dessert finally arrived, the famous chef realized that it was microwaved as well. But did it at least taste alright? Well, the short answer is no. You buy a store-bought frozen, boiled in a bag, and serve it to me stone cold in the center. You're not even cooking. The apples in the pie were raw, and the overall dish was described as gross. The only thing, or rather the only person he found worthy of praise in the entire hotel was this guy, Scooter. He worked as a prep cook. Scooter had enrolled in culinary school and wanted to open his own bakery after graduating as a pastry chef. Chef Ramsay was so moved by this youngster's dedication that he even volunteered to fund his education. I want you to keep in touch with me. Okay. I'll give you my email address because I want to finance those next four years in college personally. That's what Chef Ramsay is all about. He uplifts the good and trashes the bad. And that's exactly what he did at this hotel in Newtown, Pennsylvania, where the owner simply brushed off the disgusting food by saying this. Are you saying now that they're lying? Please. I don't know. Because Are you I... saying they're lying? It's inaccurate though. I do. It's inaccurate? Yes. In the sixth episode of the third season, the famous chef found himself at a hotel that was truly hellish. We're talking about the Brick Hotel, which was owned by Verendar Carr, a therapist, and her son CJ. When Chef Ramsay arrived at the hotel, he found a plethora of issues with the interior, but that was nothing compared to the cheap quality of their food. Hungry, he sampled their French onion soup, which he found to be dreadfully tasteless. It was so bad that he preferred having this instead of the soup. That tastes better. Mm -hmm. Next, he ordered something that he normally never would, a cauliflower steak. And when the dish arrived, he was baffled as to why anyone would want it on the menu. However, the next dish that arrived made him leave the restaurant. He received a slimy, gooey sandwich which wasn't fresh, wasn't frozen, but was canned and made in China. After an experience like that, it's obvious that Chef Ramsay cancelled his order and had nothing more to say about the food. Do you know what? Cancel it. Because if it's coming from the same kitchen, forget it. Tell the chef I travel light and I haven't got that many pairs of knickers. Thank you. But we do certainly have something to say, and that's to drop a massive like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Your love and support means the world to us, and we promise to put out more content like this. Anyway, let's get back to the Brick Hotel. Since the place had no head chef and had some demented owners, how do you think it fared after the rescue? Thankfully, the hotel changed owners in 2018 and was renamed to Rocco's at the Brick. So, do you remember any other dishes served on Hotel Hell that were just nasty? Let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching guys!